Hey everybody! <clears throat> Welcome back, Northern Land Plays of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. You're gonna laugh. I mean, first off, we are at six wins in a row, which is awesome. Let's see how we do on the random first. You always gotta check and see how you do on the random. Seems pretty safe as Magdalene. Also known as Maggie. T7NNXQ1T. Um, so, I'm, I'm living in a new world here. It's been a paradigm shift. Kate got me, as a holiday gift, a 32-inch 4K 144Hz curved gaming monitor. Um, it's it's a new world. I, I've been using, uh, I, I don't know, probably like 19 or 20-inch, uh, you know, 1080p 60 monitors for a long time, like like five years plus. Um, I am now, like, I'm using, I'm, I'm sitting, I would say maybe two feet at most, maybe, maybe a foot and a half away from a, a curved screen that is, uh, larger than the TV that we had in my family home until I was, like, in 10th grade. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a new world, by the way, I'm very thankful for it, I'm, I'm, I, admittedly, yes, get the jokes out. I, when I tweeted about it, everybody made the same joke. Whoa, Isaac and Chess are gonna look so good on that. Hey, man, I don't just play Isaac and Chess, okay? Sometimes, like, when the recordings are done, I'll play some Rocket League, and then I'll have, like, some, you know, Netflix up on the other monitor or something like that is gonna look absolutely beautiful. Breathtaking. I'm looking forward to it. I do. I have to enable some settings still in Windows to actually get it to to be 144 hertz because I guess it's it's not on by default. But um, even just the picture quality is amazing here. But I it, it it honestly it's so bright that I think like I was I was thinking in 2021 like you know it's a natural time of the year to start thinking about uh, you know making some changes or some improvements etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know I uh, many weeks ago I, I purchased like a new uh, camera so I could make the stream uh, like webcam look nicer uh, it still hasn't arrived yet because there was a bit of a back order but it's it's still on the move but uh, I, I was like man maybe another problem is actually that like we, our lighting is kind of not so great um, I actually think as long as I play games with high brightness this monitor has alleviated that concern <laughs> I say that without a hint of irony with 100% sincerity. So I mean I'm excited, you know. It's a nice uh it's a nice gift. It's a nice upgrade. I am a very hard person to buy any kind of gift for because I have no um I mean this is uh, again, it's not like I'm so enlightened, but you know, I, I have very few material desires. You know, I, I don't get the FOMO for like a new cell phone or anything like that. I don't get the FOMO for like you know, it, basically I I don't get the FOMO for material possessions for the most part. Um, not to say I'm completely immune to it. Again, I did buy a Vive. Oof, 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 oof. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just not for me. Um, but, uh, that, really, the, my wife always knocks it out of the park on gifts. Because she, she knows that when you buy me a gift, you don't look in a category. You look in a, in a sentiment. And the sentiment is always things that would make my life better, but I would never buy for myself because I'm cheap. I will, I will, you know, live on... I'm not taking that uh, pill. One second. I'm going to caffeinate here. Still pretty early. Not according to the clock, but according to my brain. Um, but yeah, I, I will always live, uh, you know, fairly austere, I would suppose. You know, I, like I would still be sitting on a, uh, like a $15 dining chair. Uh, if, if I... Well, I mean, why why did I buy a nice chair? Because I was like, I started to run the numbers uh, mentally, and I'm like, wait a minute. Um, sure, a, a nice computer chair can be pretty expensive, but on the other hand, what does a new spine cost? It turns out it's a lot. It might come down over the years as like technology improves, but for the time being, it's kind of a lot. And don't even, by the way, you know, you gotta recognize, and I, we go down this road from time to time, People watching this who are like 16 years old will literally be like, I don't think it's actually going to hurt your back to sit on the chair. I sit um, on a chair. I, I rotate the chair. 
180 degrees, and then I put my knees on where your butt's supposed to go, and then I rest my arms on the back of the chair, and nothing's wrong with my back so far. Yeah, it's because you're 16 years old. I'm not, like, you're just, like, you, you don't even understand. You have, like, um, Wolverine's healing factor. Um, and the worst part is you don't appreciate it. You know, you just, you're, you're getting caught up in, like, you know, vain stuff. Like, oh, my bangs don't look right today, right? Nah, man, like, come on. You, you, honestly, here's how I would put it into perspective, okay? It's not like, again, I'm, I'm 32 years old. I'm not, like, on my way to the scrap heap. Not at least until, you know. Maybe, I, I would say you start to think about the scrap heap when you, when you, when you enter your 60s. I mean, I'm, like, thinking about the scrap heap. I'm just, like... I'm still on the uh, on the inside looking out. Is that what I'm looking for? Anyway, I'm not saying if you're 60, they should take you to the scrap heap, but I think there's probably days where you wake up and you're like, you know what? <laughs> I wouldn't so much mind being the heap doesn't sound so bad right now. Um, but even still, like, okay, so like when we brought the baby home from the hospital, um, you know, I ordered some bagels. You know, I I, I tricked myself. I I wanted a bagel sandwich. So I ordered um, a bagel sandwich on Uber Eats, and then one for my wife, because then I was like, I'm not splurging, it's just called grocery, sweetheart. And then I said, you know what, this is way too expensive. So what I did uh, counterintuitively is I added more stuff to the order so that it felt like it was proportionally less expensive. So I put, I added like half a dozen bagels and, and a little bit of cream cheese, you know, so I could have breakfast for the rest of the week. Anyway, I, not, not a great fiduciary move, but that's okay. Um, it, it you know, it is the season when you when you got a, a brand new baby and you're like, you know, zonked out of your gourd on on sleeplessness. Uh, anyway, speaking of sleeplessness, I was cutting a bagel uh, and and sliced my finger a little bit. Not not to the extent where you would be like, oh, I got to go to the hospital, but just like took a little bit of the skin out and uh, bled a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this pill just because we had two of them and it actually worked out quite nicely. Um. That cut happened, I, I would say, in the first week of October. It it healed quickly in the sense, like, you know, it, it stopped bleeding quickly and, like, new skin grew over it. But I could still see the mark from that for, like, six weeks after it. And I'm talking, it was, like, the size of a fingernail. It's so small, the fact that it stuck around is, like, is crazy. Meanwhile, and that, that's just what life is like at, at, at 32. It's like, if you, if you cause yourself an injury... Prepare yourself because you know you're you're gonna see the effects of that injury for some time to come. But at the same like in the same period, more or less, my daughter. Um, hold on, you know I'm not a coward anymore. Let's take it. I'm not scared. You hear me? I'm not scared anymore. I guess we might as well, but it's not very good, of course. Um, I suppose we could have gone to uh, the boss trap room here, but, um, you know, babies, they, uh, they have really sharp fingernails. We cut her fingernails, and by that, I mean, Kate cuts her fingernails. Um, but still, sometimes, you know, they, they don't have full control of their arms, right? So they're, like, just moving their arms around like crazy. Sometimes they accidentally give themselves, like, a little uh, scratch on the forehead or on the cheek or something like that. So some days... Um, we'll just like wake up and then we look at the baby and the baby's got like uh, a little scratch on her forehead and we go Oh, she must have scratched herself in the night. I can't imagine we won't take this, but let's just chill for a minute here We, we don't have to take it immediately with Ma of the Void. You know, we should be safe It would be nice if possible to get a couple of demon hearts first just to secure the investment here um, But anyway, um the baby heals. It's actually superhuman. Like, a, a, a scratch on the forehead, the baby will actually bear no marks, indicating that they had previously suffered a laceration. I would say within three to six hours. Like, it is not like a 24-hour thing. It's like the cells are, are going through mitosis at such a prodigious pace that literally they're like, you know, scratch, I've never heard of her. It's crazy. It also makes sense, because I remember, like, as an as a... Well, let's start with the alternative. As an adult, I very rarely suffer injuries that actually cause me a marked amount of physical pain. It's not to say there's no pain associated with adult life, you know. You could have fibromyalgia or, you know, any number of health concerns. I'm not trying to 
act like, you know, once you're an adult, it's just peachy for everybody, but, um... Hold on, this is good. That's very good. Hey, you shouldn't have picked that up, because you should have taken nine lives earlier. But it is very good, <laughs> even in spite of that. I don't know, maybe we don't take nine lives here. We already got four HP, and the run's looking looking mighty nice. We could, we could justify not taking it. And and it, it probably won't have a material impact on the run either way. At, at this point, but... Um, regardless, like, I, I stub my toe from time to time, or, you know, if I'm... If I'm through ill-advisement committed to some kind of home improvement project, you might hit your thumb with a hammer or something like that. But as a kid, I have memories of, like, you know, you, you suffer injuries on, on a much more uh, regular pace, you know? You're, you're playing sports outside or something like that. You, you do a slide tackle, you skin your knee, you know, you, you get the idea. Um, I, was, I was getting skinned knees and you know sometimes you'd like scrape your knees on gravel and stuff like that and then the gravel gets like embedded in your knee and it's the whole thing man like that but kids are so resilient you know i remember you would like ha suffer an injury like that like you'd skin your knee and it would take like some of the skin off and it would hurt for like an hour and then like it would leave a mark for like 12 hours and then the next day it's like you never even fell down. It's like you've never fallen down before in your life. Now, like, when it, when you're an adult, you, you wear that on your sleeve, I think, for, like, basically the rest of your life. Might as well. Might as well. Like, if you see somebody over the age of 60, and they have, like, a mark on their cheek, if you say, where'd you get that mark, I guarantee it'll be something like, oh, yeah, I was playing, like, a uh, softball in my, in my uh, company softball game, and then uh, I got hit by... Uh, a ball, and it was not like a line drive, it was just like they threw it badly and it hit me in the face. And you're like, oh, when was that? They're gonna be like, 1996. I, I personally guarantee it. So I know that we left nine lives behind. I, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm missing it, Bob. Great item. Just on, on that rare, uh, beam right now where we really just don't need it. Um, and, and actually I think there's a case to be made that it provides us with more, uh, more of a penalty than, uh, than a profit right now. So anyway, I don't really know how we got on that, but suffice it to say, pretty stoked about this monitor. It is kind of comical. I'm still playing uh, Isaac in like a little postage stamp sized uh, window in the dead center of the screen. But that just means I can have so much other stuff open on the sides and just watch it with my peripheral vision while I'm playing the game. <laughs> By the way, it, it is worth noting, today is the uh, the 31st. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. I, I've seen a lot of, a lot of positivity and a, a, a lot of cynicism surrounding the New Year. Here's something uh, you don't need to say unless you define your identity just by being, like, perceiving yourself as 1% smarter than the average person around you. Um, yeah, everybody knows that all of the problems with 2020 that, that have happened on, like, a global level are not going to, um, immediately, uh, you know, be fixed when the calendar turns over to the new year. You know, you, you, I've seen a lot of smug tweets that are like, it's amazing the number of people that think, uh, as soon as the calendar turns to January 1st, 2021, all of Earth's problems are going to... Nobody thinks that, okay? Everybody's just celebrating, you know, the fact that it's, like, it's a, a symbolic milestone, you know? It's the same as, like, you know, when you graduate from high school, it doesn't mean you know anything, but you do have a piece of paper now, and yet now you get to go to your undergraduate degree where you can find out just how little you know in the first place. You know, people are just... they're. It's the same thing, like, uh, you know, well, technically, it's not really... You didn't turn a year older today. Actually, every day you turn 1 365th of a year older, and then today is just the culmination of that incremental... Like, just shut up, really, basically. Like, everybody gets it. You're not the only person on Earth who, who you know, understands if you were to apply a strict logician's uh, rubric to it, how it applies, okay? But I, I, you know, I, I always think that, you know, different phases of the year have a, have different, uh, have a different vibe, and I'm, I'm a fan of New Year's, I, I don't really, I'm not a fan of New Year's in the sense, like, I'm like, oh, let's, let's get fricked up. I'll tell you, I remember my worst New Year's Eve ever. 
And it was fun because I was hanging out with my friends, but it was terrible. But it, because of the like macro conditions. But then like secondarily, it was also nice because it kind of taught me some things about myself. It was a deck jan. It was probably deck jan 2013 or 2014. I can't remember. And uh, you know, I was. I guess I wasn't married, but you know, I, I was in a relationship with Kate. Most of my other friends were single, and I went to Toronto, because I, I go... Like, it's a long story, I suppose, to set up the context. Basically, I went to my hometown, which is in Ontario. I presently live in British Columbia, so it's like a, it's a long trip. Um, most, most of my friends uh, from high school and college live in Ontario, and then Toronto is not too far away from my hometown, so I took like a... Either we, I got driven, or I took a bus... Uh, to, to Toronto and we, we hung out. But anyway, for New Year's, you know, it, uh, Ontario winter, pretty bad. No matter where you are in Ontario, it's, it's not nice. There are parts that are worse than others. And Toronto is probably amongst the best, actually. But still quite cold, quite snowy, quite wet. Um, so I don't, I don't want to ever go to a, you know, a nightclub. But especially not on, like, New Year's Eve. But my friends who were, you know, single and, you know, more in the... I the vibe of partying, I guess. We're like, you know, let's go, let's go. And then we went and we stood outside. We probably got to the line at like, I don't know. I would say like, it was late-ish by like trying to make a plan, you know. It was probably like 10 by the time we got in the line. We literally waited in the line for like, I guess we don't have any keys, huh? We waited in the line for an hour and a half cover was 20 bucks or 30 bucks Canadian to get in which is just outrageous I paid it you know because I was I was hanging out with my friends and then you get mandatory coat check was like another five bucks or something like that you have to give them your coat because there's a dress code inside of this bar almost exclusively packed with uh, people drinking underage with fake IDs they're like hey come on this is a classy establishment <laughs> you gotta you can't wear your winter coat in here are you insane anyway so you go through the cover charge, you go through the mandatory coat check. Got in literally at like 10.40 or something, or 11.40 or something like that. Ordered a drink, of course it's like 8 bucks. Um, and of course we're going to take Incubus here. <clears throat> 10, 9, 8, 7, okay, it's New Year's. Um, Happy New Year. Literally as soon as that happened, I, I would go to Malf and I'm like, Hey, this kind of sucks, you want to just like go? And he was like, yeah, let's go. I try to leave. Um, at the mandatory coat check, they lost my coat. What's up with that? They force you to use the mandatory coat check, and like I gave them the tag, and they're like, yeah, it's not here, we must have given it to somebody else. And there's like no recourse. <laughs> it's, you, you can't take it up to a small claims court. They got like no no losses and, and breakages department, you know? You're just, you're just screwed. Um, so I was like, ah, you'll never see me here again, even though I would never come back here to begin with for a multitude of reasons, not the least of which is that, you know, I live in a completely different province. Um, I should have at least asked for a coat check refund, but at that point I was just like, you know, I just want to get out of here. That kind of New Year's doesn't appeal to me. But I always, uh, I, I look to New Year's as a time to, you know, you look at the year that went by and... You know, really, 2020 on a, on a macro level sucked really hard, but on a, on a micro level was, was good for me. I'm not bragging, I'm just, it's more like, you know, it, it's the most consequential year of my life by definition of the fact that we had our first child, right? Like, that's, that's prop, I don't know, like, in terms of major life milestones, I never really thought about where it ranks, but it's probably gotta be number one. I haven't gone through every major life milestone. Getting getting married, um, it, it's a milestone, but it really didn't change my life at all. Like, of, of the adult milestones that, you know, not everybody's gonna go through them. Some people, you know, choose not to get married. They don't like the institution of marriage or whatever. It's fine, Does you know. It's not like I own stock in marriage and then you're like, uh, you know, undermining my confidence in it or anything like that. It's just... You know, it doesn't work for everybody, and of course not everybody's going to have a kid. Um, but, I will tell you, people talk about, like, marriage as changing your life drastically. Wasn't really the case for me. I think it would change your life drastically if you went from, like, 
if you went on one of those shows that was like married at first sight, where you're like, I'm used to living my life as a single 28-year-old in Manhattan, but I'm a little lonely, so I let uh, the Lifetime Network set me up with a complete stranger and we exchange nuptials. That's insane. You are stupid. I'm sorry. That's a personal attack, but at the same time, it's what I believe. <laughs> You can't, you can't go from single life to, to married in one day. There's a, there's a series of steps where you, uh, you know, you learn to actually, like, accommodate other people within your lifestyle and not exclusively get what you want 100% of the time. Um, you know, sometimes you have to compromise on what you want to eat for dinner, for example. You know, sometimes you got to be like, I don't really feel like cleaning the house, and you clean the house anyway. This is a very fast run. Yeah, and moreover, you like you know <laughs> this is, sounds kind of um, monka s, but just hear me out on this one. One of the other skills you need for marriage is honestly, and and this is true for like any relationship in general. And I, I don't think it's uh, like damning. I think it's just honest. Uh, one of the things you need to do is get really good at listening. Like when I was single. If you're talking to somebody, like, let's say you're talking to somebody on, on, on Discord or text message or whatever, and they start talking about some stuff that you're not interested in, you just, you go like, wow, that's crazy, right? And then they send you another message, and you go, whoa, weird. So anyway, I gotta go, right? Like, you just... <laughs> for, for the mo Unless it's something important, obviously, but, you know, you, you kind of just bounce. You, you send them, like, a, a, a message that's more or less, like, a veiled code for like, yeah, I don't really know about all that, but I'm gonna go. Um, you can't do that in a, in a relationship. You would, I mean, you'd be kind of like a serious a-hole, you know what I mean? Like, if, you're, if your significant other started talking to you about something that was important to them, and you were like, wow, that's crazy. Anyway, like, I'm gonna go into the other room and play Smash Bros. You know, that's... That's, that's not what it's like. At least it's not what it's like for, for me. And moreover, I'm not treating it like a a negative, like, I'm, there's so many times, like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I, you, you recognize that there's, like, a give-take, if that makes sense. Um, like, uh, I'll, I'll talk to Kate and be like, oh, you know, our investments, uh, did pretty well today. They went up, like, uh, 0.85%, and she goes, like, haha, that's cool, you know? And I'm like, she's not interested in it, but I, whatever, I wanted to say it. <laughs> I, I, I derive some pleasure out of saying it, and because we're married, you have to, uh, you have to humor me. You, you have to go like, wow, that's neat. And then it's like, look, I'm not a fashion guy. Sometimes my wife will go like, what do you think of this outfit? And then I pay it forward. I go, whoa, it looks amazing. You look like a movie star. You know? It, it's the, and it's not that she doesn't look like a movie star. It's just that everything looks like a movie star to me, you know? I, I, <laughs> I don't know, that's not really the way I mean to phrase it, but you know what I mean, it's like I'm not the arbiter of, of what makes sense in fashion. Like I'm, right now I'm wearing Dan's merch, like like 90% of my, uh, of my wardrobe is like a pair of pants I bought for 25 bucks at Winners. Um, and then uh, like a hoodie from a, a Twitch streamer, that's, I'm, I'm not the be all end all on fashion. But yeah, I, I really don't think like... Marriage for me, and I've heard this from a lot of people, marriage for me was not a major change. I definitely understand culturally, like, I think if you were, if you were part of, like, an arranged marriage, I could see how that would be a, a pretty big change if you very rapidly went from, it's time for me to get my revenge. If you very rapidly went from single to, like, I'm in a lifetime commitment with somebody that I, I didn't even necessarily even know that well before. That's a huge deal. But if you're just like, yeah, we've been together for a long time and now we like signed the document. I don't see why that uh, that necessarily has to change a lot. Obviously, unless something goes terribly wrong. Um, but even then, I'm like, it doesn't change that much, right? Because like if you've been living together for a couple of years, at least in, in Canadian law, you're you're legally married more or less anyway. But having a kid changes everything. Like if you... If you have a child and your life has not changed, at least, like, it might get back to some semblance of, of its old normalcy at some point, I imagine. But if, like, in the newborn phase of my life, if I talked to somebody, and or in the newborn phase, in the phase of your life where you have a newborn, 
If I talked to somebody in the same boat and they were like, yeah, our life hasn't really changed at all. I would, this is a situation where I would not be like, tell me your secrets. I would be like, you have to go to jail. Because you're not doing your job. <laughs> you're not, you're not, I guess, okay, here's the, the flip side is, well, I was going to say, if you, if you didn't work at all, like if somehow you were like retired at, you know, a, a, an insanely young age and you had your first child, maybe you would be like, it hasn't changed that much. But even still, it changes a lot. Like, it's an, like you got to feed the baby every two to three hours and, you know, Unless you were already, like, I don't know, feeding a baby every two to three hours, I don't see how it would change. Because then you, like, you feed the baby. It takes, you know, it depends, you know, if, if you nurse the baby, which admittedly I have no familiar with, but, you know, it, the baby wants to eat every two to three hours. The nursing itself might take half an hour, sometimes more than half an hour. Um, I think we're just going to chill on this one. I, I think we could get away with um, black powder, but I don't think we have a... A pressing concern for it but uh, you know so that leaves you an hour and a half and then I would say on average probably like half of the feedings will also coincide with like a diaper change and then you are like that that can take another five minutes maybe it depends on the severity of the diaper and you very and it's not like you can like stack them up right you can't just be like I'm gonna go in my office for eight hours and then we'll do a bunch of feedings in bulk <laughs> we're gonna do like baby meal prep <laughs> So that I don't lose my productivity through through my uh, my most productive phase of the day. No, you're like, is it's every two or three hours, right? Um, for me, that's like by far the most major life change I've gone through. Like we we bought our first home in 2019. It was like we moved in in like November of 2019. So even that's almost part of the 2020 uh, list for me as well. Um, in terms of like major life changes, it w it is a major life change. But like you know, once you knock out the mortgage payment and get used to it, and then you know you you just kind of like live in your life. You know, it's it's a major change, but mostly like on a you know on the books. In terms of your actual lifestyle, you know you maybe you're like you know what? Let's order a little bit less Uber Eats. Let's eat a little bit more um, Kraft macaroni and cheese for a bit. But um, you're certainly like it's it's not this not like when you own a home all of a sudden you're like oh yeah like I I now wake up two times in the night every night so it's definitely like it's and it, don't get me wrong it's it's worth it and I recognize that it's like evolution I w let's not say playing a trick on you but like the the human I mean this is not human but like the animal evolutionary instinct is like so powerful if you had any other pastime let's call it or or like if you if you had a job that that was like you know the same um duties as raising a newborn uh you would probably be like you know what is not the best job in the world when you're doing it and it's like you know you feel that pull because it's your child, you're like, this is the best job in the world, dude. Why would anybody want to be like a, a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer when I could just like wipe up this poopy diaper every day? It's crazy. It does. It changes things in a big way, right? Like, my daughter cries all the time over stupid stuff. I'm not judging her. She's just a baby. Like when I was a baby, I cried over dumb things too. There's like one. <laughs> I would say there's two good reasons to cry as a baby. Because you only have, like, like two needs, right? You're, you're hungry, or... I mean, I guess if you're sick or something like that. If you have, like, a fever, then sure. But, you know, it, on, on the average day, there's only two reasons to cry. You're hungry, or you pooped your pants, right? Or you peed your pants. Um, can you imagine, by the way, if adults were like that? If, if you would, like, go to a meeting at your office at, like, you know... 11 15 a.m. and it went on like a little long and then like somebody in the meeting started to cry and they couldn't control it and they were like i don't mean cry quietly i mean like you know and you'd be like what's wrong what's wrong with our cfo be, oh he's just hungry you know how he gets now this is a little different because as a baby you know you don't obviously you don't have the ability to really feed yourself Although, that would be sick. 
see a little baby, like, crawl over to the fridge. Open it up. Grab, like, a... An insurer or something like that. Anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna file that away in my big book of movie ideas. Um... By the way, I'm realizing, actually, this run is kind of doo-doo. Rate of Fire is doing all the work for us. I'm still glad we didn't take nine lives, but... We, we need a damage upgrade, ideally. I guess we have a lot of bombs, and then we also have uh, Pyromaniac, so it's actually it's pretty good. And let's, let's take a look for a second secret room real quick. But yeah, th those are the two reasons, as a baby, that I give you permission to cry. If you uh, have a poo-poo diaper... Or you're hungry. But she'll just like, you know, we'll, uh... Let's give it a second here. We'll feed her. We'll change her diaper. And then she'll still cry. And then you're like, what's the problem? And then you just look at her and she starts smiling. And you're like, man. What's, what's wrong with her? <laughs> but at the same time, even... And this is where I was going with this to begin with. Unless you thought I was just taking a... Like a pot shot at our three-month-old infant. Um... But, uh, I don't think we want Ludo. This, this, we've abstained from a lot on this run. But either way, um, even though you know that there's, like, she only cries for either, like, a physiological need or, like, some random, I don't know, let's not call it a random neurological firing, but you, you get what I mean, right? Like, like, who knows what goes through a baby's mind when they cry j when all of their other needs are met? Um, when you see the baby smile, and then in an instant, because they have no, like, filter at all. In an instant, it changes to, like, the most genuine pout you've ever seen in your entire life. It's like a lightning bolt of concern passes through your body. I've, I had never, prior to the, to, to the birth, I've never experienced anything like it before. And you, you kind of laugh at yourself, because you're like, it, it, what could it possibly be, right, that she's that upset by? But it's still, it's it's like, um, you know, when you get, like, the shivers, and it, se it sends a, a chill through your whole body? It's like that, but with, like, like, nurturing. It's wild. I don't know how else to describe it. Anyway, so 2020's been, like, a, it's been a crazy year, obviously. 2021, probably also, at at least be a crazy year for for some time um possibly the whole thing but you know I, I, all i'll say i guess is like i i don't think there's merit in necessary I'm, I'm not one of those people and you could just tell from the way i talk and the things i talk about right i'm not one of those people who's like you know, yeah, I don't concern myself with all that pessimistic stuff i just uh, i constantly think every day is going to be the best day of my life no i like I derive some value from being, like, rooted in reality and having, like, realistic expectations. But I also do get annoyed by people who are, like, just boundlessly pessimistic at all times. Um, and they're like, you know, can you blame me? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, like, even if I couldn't, I still don't really want to listen to you anymore. Can you blame me? Can you, can you blame me for being annoyed with your pessimism? Anytime you talk to them, they're like, well, yeah... You're right, tomorrow is a holiday, but on the other hand, the problems that uh, affected the world this year are really emblematic of systemic shortcomings, uh, you know, in society in general, perhaps even defects with the mind of mankind to begin with, so I really wouldn't expect anything to... You're like, dude, I was just saying a Happy New Year, like... Is it a Happy New Year, though? Don't you know today's the last day to watch The Office on Netflix? It's just, uh, you know, I'm not one of those people who's like, you know, every day. I mean, I, I do see every day as like an opportunity or a, a, a gift is maybe a little too sentimental, but you know what I mean. I, I, I do see every day as like a, you know, if you had a crappy day yesterday, you got a chance to make it better today. But I, I do, oh man. That would be a great sketch, you know? One of those like Instagram positivity influencers. Who, by the way, you know, if, if they're happy with that, then, then more power to them, you know? Seven billion people on the planet, you know? And not everybody's going to agree on on issues of, of mood and philosophy. But, um, you know, like a genuine apocalypse happening, like, like a plane crash landing on an island. I guess it's not an apocalypse, but it's pretty apocalyptic for the people involved. Um, 
And then like people are like, what are we gonna do? We got no water. And the in the Instagram positivity influencer is just like, look at this beautiful beach. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that could work. And they could do like some uh, perineum tanning. Perineum? I don't know the I don't know the word. I don't use it in my in my everyday vernacular. Anyway, I will never make these sketches, so feel free. You can you can combine that sketch with uh, the sketch that we came up with in Spelunky, where uh, a millennial gets arrested, but they don't know anybody's phone number. So instead of having a phone call, they're like, "I need my text." When do I get my text? All right, easy win. Might seem like like ten percent vulnerable, depending on your expectations here, but it, it's really not because. Um, we, we have enough bombs, and not to mention Yumheart, but we have enough bombs to just keep ourselves going here. I definitely do feel uh, vindicated, by the way, uh, that we didn't take 9 lives. I don't think we would have lost with 9 lives, but I think it would have been a lot hotter, honestly. I think it would have been a little spicier, and that was a fun one. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on this beautiful monitor. See ya!